He had his gun, so he just swung it open. I start to notice that, you know, the atmosphere feels a little bit weird. First thing he seen was this six and a half foot tall, broad shoulder, dark hair. That freaked him out. And we hadn't talked to her about like life and death and what any of that means. She's three years old, you know. So we turned around. Suddenly there's a whole tree falling across the road. And she was describing to us that, you know, there was a deceased person uh, that she could she, she could see visually. You're listening to Cryptid Clues, where we tackle the ever-expanding history and mystery of monsters and supernatural madness every Monday. You can find us at cryptidclues.ca for more information, or even check out exclusive content and support us at patreon.com slash cryptidclues. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode of Cryptid Clues. I am your host, Taylor, and today, well... Well, I had to shift some things around. Originally, I had lined up a special episode for today, but due to personal reasons, I had to just kind of shift things around to another week, hence also why this is a day late, and I apologize. But that aside, this past week, it was very exciting. Uh, I took a trip actually over the border. It was very, very quick and related for work uh, that I was just taking this trip, but I was able to venture out to the beautiful state of Georgia, specifically Atlanta. Now, I haven't been this far east in America before. This was a first. If we're looking at Canada, I've been to Toronto, uh, and I, I've I've been as far south as Cancun in Mexico, but this is a first for me. And I've been to the western states of America. This isn't my first time going into the United States, so I've got a little bit of experience trekking through, trekking through there. But a, a good decade ago, my dad and I had did a road trip taking us all the way to California. It was a heckin' good time, but of course... That was wheels on the ground. And what I want to talk about today a little bit is similar to my recent episode where I was focusing on the Canadian provinces from above. Flying from the westernmost province, British Columbia, to the far east provided some amazing views from being so high up. Now, we're in the sky for well over six hours at 35,000 feet roughly, give or take. So I was keeping an eye out, of course, for any other moving objects. And there was one instance that I'm going to mention later. But on the main theme here, though, being is how much force there is. Before we get into that, though, a few plugs. You can find us on our socials via YouTube, X, Facebook, and Patreon. You can also find uh, more information on our website, cryptoclues.ca. And should you wish to contact us directly, you can do so via cryptoclues at gmail.com. Now, Without further ado, let's get into this. So firstly, when we compare British Columbia to Georgia, let's remember that the distance between them is 2,237 miles. (laughs) That's quite the trek. And even though it's separated by that much land with the odd few lakes in between, I was surprised at how similar Georgia was to British Columbia. And if you're watching the YouTube version, you'll see an image here from above that shows how forested Georgia is. Now, of course, it's not devoid of a cityscape, But being the 21st largest state by size in America, it houses many densely populated cities and I dare say some extremely busy highways. Adjacent to these roadways, though, is very thick forest. And that's spread between many of the cities within this American state. And that's coming from my personal experience here. When I'm flying over and I'm seeing all of this forested area, the airport itself was massive. It was huge. I couldn't believe it. But when I got to the airport and I was uh, shuttling out towards my hotel, the highway went on for quite some time. Uh, There's obviously different turnoffs and whatnot, but my hotel was uh, north of Atlanta near Alpharetta. That's where I I was going for work. So seeing how dense the forest was on left and right sides of this highway, it it blew my mind. I, I felt very similarly driving through British Columbia. So... Getting back to the state here, Georgia is home to two national parks, which can be found between Atlanta, Macon, Athens, and Augusta. Now, those are the state's four largest cities. Outside of Georgia, we have South Carolina, Florida, Alabama, Tennessee. They're kind of circling around. Now, many of these states we have covered in previous episodes, and they're home to their own local Bigfoots, albeit with different names in their respective states. The creatures all share that strong similarity, though, and if I had a little more time on my trip, I was, I, I, I mean, I wanted to, I really, really did, but I was there for four days, two days, one full work day. The second one was a half a work day and the other two days were 
specifically just traveling. But if I was there for one full day, I would have made a point of checking this place out. And all I could do was just dive in and look into what people are saying about it and just look online, talk to some locals about it. So this place, and I highly recommend it if you are there, you can find a place called Expedition Bigfoot, the Sasquatch Museum. Now they have a wide range of print casts, statues, and other really neat things. But what stands them out from beyond just being a museum is that they're their own research and reporting center. So if you happen to be in the area of 1934 Highway 515 Blue Ridge, Georgia, go check this place out. Now, another common name for Bigfoot in Georgia is the Woodbugger. And based on what I alluded to earlier, with such a vast wilderness in between the state cities and highways, sightings are very prominent in and throughout Georgia. So on that note, I actually have an encounter here that I'm going to I'm going to disclose and it's from 2019. It's one of two encounters that took place within the same month in Northeast Georgia, and I quote, 51-year-old man says he saw a 7 to 8 foot tall creature standing along a mountain highway in Georgia on May 20th. It's one of two reported sightings this month in the same area of the Northeast Georgia, according to details sourced from the Expedition Bigfoot social media pages. The 20th of May incident reportedly happened at about 8.30 p.m. along State Highway 151 in Cherry Log, which is between the towns of LJ and Blue Ridge. Now, it was told to the Charlotte Observer that it was still light out and the driver had braked when he saw what he described as a very dark, 7 to 8 foot tall, hair two-legged creature with a pointed head. He pulled over, skidding on the gravel, and waited on the back of the small patch of woods, thinking it would emerge on the other side, and it never did. The man who gave the testimonial feared being ridiculed over this incident, but exclaimed that he did indeed see a Bigfoot on his way home that night. The other sighting location that was within that month was in Rubon County on Memorial Day, and I quote, My own wife didn't believe me, I guess, he exclaimed, now, knowing they'd been married for 23 years. It wasn't no bear. It was walking straight up like a human, with long arms swinging back and forth like a monkey. I saw it on the side of the road. It took five steps and was gone in the woods. End quote. Before this experience, the gentleman was mentioning that he was... He wasn't what you would call a believer in the cryptid. However, he wondered if development in the area was actually flushing them out. And... It's it's absolutely plausible. That is a definitely a foundation of many beliefs is that logging and deforestation is pushing these things further and further out. And sometimes their territories cross over into more human areas that are expanding. I digress, however. And I quote, I mean, I'm 51 and I've never seen one before. Adding that he was definitely afraid and I wasn't getting out of the truck. I wasn't going into the woods looking for it. End quote. Now, Northeast Georgia is well known amongst researchers for being a hub of Bigfoot activity. Now, still residing in the state of Georgia here, I found police dash cam footage that was recorded in Lumpkin County. The conversation here is between a sheriff and a female passenger when all of a sudden a bipedal being just crosses the road and it's actually caught on the dash cam. So you can hear their conversation. And if you're watching the YouTube version. If you tune into that, you'll actually see the footage of the creature crossing the road, and I'll have that overlap and play right now. It's kicking in your door. I can articulate that. In court, they have got no good intentions. Yeah. They, their intentions are to harm you. Yeah. I can very very easily articulate that. Mm-hmm. But, uh, they will, though. The old ladies in this county, they'll, they'll liable to shoot first, ask questions after they've got your body. Oh, don't you know? Yeah, I've had several of them tell me that. They're like, look, I live in this county since I was 12 years old. Had the farm, oh. daddy's farm. Oh. Yeah. Still got the land. And anybody coming on my property looking for no good, I'm gonna shoot them. Absolutely. Oh, the hell? What, what the crap? What was that? Did you see that? Yes. Holy crap! What the heck was that? That was on two feet, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh my goodness. I thought I was seeing things actually. Oh my goodness! Please tell me we got that on audio or video. I 
You see anything down there? Mm -mm. Oh, yes. Oh. So I don't know what the heck it is. It's something going back. See it? Where's it's, that? It's right over there. I don't know what it. Now it's. Hang on a second. Let me get over here. Just a person. Stop. <coughs> Did you see that? I'm not crazy. I seen something, didn't you? Huh? Yeah, I saw it. What was that? I thought I was like, we were, well, I don't remember what we were talking about, but I seen something. What is over here? If there's houses or something, I would be willing to bet somebody did something. I wonder if they came through there. And playing a prank, maybe? I don't that know. looked like a bear, but it was running on two feet. I, you know, I didn't want to say bear, but that's what I thought. I, I don't know what to make of that, to be honest with you. Can you see if it's on that I'm, recorder? Yeah, I'm about to. It was almost going too fast for a, oh, to be an animal. Oh, I've never seen nothing like that before. Man, and anybody coming on my property to look for no good, I'm going to shoot them. Absolutely. Oh, the heck? What the crap? Absolutely crazy that and that footage. The fact too that you can see, it kind of just it's dark, of course. And dash cam footage at this at this time is not the greatest. Uh, the technology is getting better, but you can see it almost as it's kind of getting to the the side left side of the road as it's kind of exiting the the pavement there, and it happens so quick. But I imagine, of course, you're in that situation. You can see it much more effectively with your eyes. And it's actually kind of crazy because, I, of course, I have a dash cam. You drive in a big city like in the Okanagan here. You want to have a dash cam because people drive like idiots. So you want to make sure you can you can um, defend yourself and have evidence in case someone hits you and doesn't own up to it. So that being said, the technology has gotten better. My dash cam, when I'm driving at night, it's incredible how well it picks up. It picks the the basically the front of my vehicle up in a brighter, more clear view than my eyes and I swear my eyes aren't that bad my eyes are pretty good but this just it lights up the road and when I look out the front of my windshield the road is so dark so it's it's truly incredible that the technology has come further but in this case this of course this is poor quality but you can still see it moving you can still see that something is there why would this be a person of course I I need to remain unbiased here but it gets me excited it gets me thinking like okay maybe this is this is something here. This really is something. But we'll have to just form our own opinions and perspectives and take it for what you think it is. Uh, formulate your own thought. Now, according to the BFRO, Georgia ranks in the top 10 American states with Bigfoot sightings. The number f uh, one position here is Washington. They're sitting at just under 1,000 in recent sightings with California in second and Florida in third. But with all this wide forested range in this American state, it really comes down to just remembering that not everything is within our range. So when you're on that freeway or driving in a small town, that dense forest adjacent to your roadway or town, it's just so thick that anything could be sitting there just watching. And I've said it before, and I'll say it again, I'm definitely a broken record at this point. But when you're driving here in British Columbia, you pull over on that highway, walk 15 feet off the road into the bush, and you're gone. So... I'm going to be elaborating a bit more on that when I 
go into an upcoming episode, basically focusing a little bit more. I did some camping out west here in the Okanagan, or west of the Okanagan, I should say. And there are some amazing, amazing just mountains and the weather was just really really stormy and rainy and just thinking this is just the perfect terrain but when you're going down these highways of course the highways themselves are frequented very often there's a lot of traffic if you pull over though and you go and take a few steps off into the bush no one's going to see you and if you're doing 90 along most of these highways even though they're two lane highways, one lane highways that are just going through forested areas for hours. Most drivers aren't going to notice anything. The, these things have to go right in front of your vehicle, just like the footage we just went through here uh, of that Sasquatch in Georgia. And it's the same thing here. These things have to be going right in front of your vehicle. You're not going to necessarily see them on the side of the road in the ditch. You're never going to see them if they're just behind the trees to your side as you're driving by doing 90. So it's just, it's something that uh, it's a disconnect. And I don't think everyone necessarily realizes that. And that's okay. I mean, we're not always going out looking for Bigfoot. That's the last thing on most of our minds. I mean, it's not on my mind. My mind, I'm going out and thinking, oh my gosh, is this going to be the day? But most people, they don't see it. And the terrain, of course, it's, like I said, the ultimate home and hiding place for anything that wants to stay out of sight. Us regular folks, I, I loop myself in as one of these regular folks. Uh, you know, I remember there was a, a, a sentence that was mentioned to me. I wish I could source it, but I can't recall exactly where it came from. But it was mentioned to me that when we go into the woods nowadays, we're essentially tourists. And I know I've mentioned this in the show before, but for all you new folks turning in, that's true. It hits home. We pack up for a weekend or a week in the woods once or twice a year. We're just visitors, and with that, we can easily form, uh, I don't mean this in a negative way, preconceived notions of rationalization of what is and isn't out there. When in reality, if you spend long enough of a time out there in the thick of it, camping or driving those old back roads, really seeing how far our backyard forests go and how much of it is really untapped by humankind, it's staggering. And again, I don't mean this in a negative way. America has many large-scale cities and capitals in each of their respective states. But with Canada, I, I, I'd say most of our large clusters of cities and populations are closer to the Canadian-American border. And it's not devoid of a small few large cities in the northern areas of our provinces, but those northern provinces themselves, they mostly have just smaller cities and populations to themselves. And most people are fleeing down towards where the border is, where the highways are, the weather is good, all that jazz. And what this all tells me is that ultimately we have so much unexplored area that something ranging in a small enough population could evade, survive, and thrive out of the human eye. Are the same creatures from British Columbia also the ones seen in Georgia? I'm not inclined to say so. Uh, that's, that's not in my position. But if we have existence of underground extensive highways these tunnels that go on and on and on well then maybe just maybe it's possible but of course that's a very bold claim and that's my own biased opinion because i do believe in these underground highways going through mountain ranges like the appalachian trail and, and whatnot but of course these creatures reflect their locations and while the georgia sasquatch do share striking similarities to the pacific northwest bigfoot they ultimately would be suited much differently, considering the temperatures alone are already vastly different from the two areas when you compare them. That was the first thing. It was much more colder in British Columbia. I'm not saying it doesn't get hot here. It, it definitely does. But when I got off that plane in Georgia, I was like, whoo, whoo, oh my goodness. It was so sweating. But that aside, there's another interesting thing I wanted to highlight here, drifting a little bit away from the Bigfoot and kind of more to the... Uh, extraterrestrial possibly so I alluded to this at the episode start as I was on my flight going towards Atlanta Georgia having flown out of Calgary Canada it was the last hour of the flight and we were approaching our descent area now we had to be rerouted due to a storm and so we were still above the cloud line I'd still say well oh, well over 30,000 feet and this white object it absolutely could have been a plane but it's the movements are what threw me off. Now, it began turning, 
And this this was to the right of our plane, and it was moving adjacent, but in an opposite direction, if that makes sense, until it finally did this incredibly sharp turn, which it looked like it was veering off towards us, but I realized it's actually veering away. Again, it was just peculiar because I've never seen a plane make a turn as prominent as that before. And it was very close too when it was doing this 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 banking here. Now, was it something else? Again. I stand by my position of just not knowing and not, I'm not trying to make this something that it isn't. I mean, you could just call me BS right now if you dare say, and I'm not going to hold it against you because I probably would do the same thing to myself. But I won't deny that 0.000001% chance that maybe it was something else. From what I saw, it didn't look like a plane and it was just this white dot that moved, I say dot, but more like an object because it was relatively close, but I couldn't tell if there were necessarily wings or anything on it because it was just moving fast and it was just doing this incredibly unusual turn and, and curvature to it as it was maneuvering. It just didn't feel plane-like to me, but we were getting near the airport. Planes are flying around here, so... I leave it up to you to decide, <laughs> but especially after all of the airline chatter that has happened recently with the mysterious lights and shapes appearing above Saskatchewan, forming and breaking formations around nearby passenger and transport airlines, it just had me thinking, and it got me got me curious, especially too because you're coming out of a storm area here, and maybe something's just kind of drawn into observing, but I digress. In closing, I'll simply say that Something is definitely going on above our heads and in our woods too. But what is specifically going on it remains to be seen. So moving on from that, some behind the scenes here at my inner workings, we're looking at doing an episode focusing on Hell's Gate. Now this is next to the Fraser River. I recently visited this site and discovered it's actually haunted. And I'm excited to uh, basically detail and cover all of that in an episode for you guys to enjoy. There's some really cool little facts involved with that and some rich history with this this area too. That episode will also detail something that might have latched onto myself and my wife while venturing out there, depending on what you believe, of course. But this photo we got is quite something and I'm trying to figure out what it is that is behind me in this photo. So I'm excited to share that in an upcoming episode. In addition to that, Ruben and I have been discussing a possibility of doing this episode focusing on Jesus, aliens, and demons. Uh, he was sharing some information with me and diving into the how the uh, the three are entwined and connected. And it's quite fascinating and it really puts an interesting light on aliens when you watch extraterrestrial movies. On top of all that, I kept mentioning having a guest on the show where her parents experienced a possible Bigfoot encounter. And that is finally happening this week. I'll be recording that tomorrow with them and having that episode drop the following Monday. I appreciate your patience. It's been a busy week, very busy week. <laughs> so lots of good content is in the works. I hope you enjoyed this episode past episodes and episodes to come. Remember, you can find us on our website, cryptoclues.ca, our social media channels, X, YouTube, and Facebook, Patreon. And if you ever wish to contact us directly for any inquiries or submissions, you can do so via cryptoclues at gmail.com. Oh, until next time, everyone, take care and stay safe.